Well, good afternoon, everyone in Liverpool. Thank you again for an incredible turnout today. This is, a, this is a great place, this is a great city, but especially when you've got a great fight card. I think everybody here knows their boxing. Everyone here knows we've got an unbelievable main event, but everyone here knows we've got an incredible card from top to bottom. This Saturday, live and exclusive on zone all around the world. Of course, the main event headlined by Liam Smith against Anthony Fowler. It's a breathtaking matchup. But what an undercard we have as well. So many great fighters and fights up here. Talk about 50-50s from the opening bell of the show on Saturday night. Going to be live through the stream up until 7 p.m. when we go on the main broadcast. Again, a brilliant show. We could have sold this arena out two or three times. And there's something very special about a sold-out show in Liverpool. And we cannot wait. We're going to have the Smith Fowler press conference after the undercard press conference. We have so many fights to, to rattle through. We're going to start actually with, again, when you talk about great fights being so early on the card, it kind of feels a bit of a shame that Luke Willis and Ryland Charlton are on so early. I know you lot are massive fight fans. You understand great boxing. You'll be in the arena, the MS arena, on Saturday night nice and early. But this is a really, really important fight. Ryland Charlton burst on the scenes against Joe Laws, knocked him out. Uh, live on Sky Sports at the time, came back, had a big fight against Florian Marku, lost there, comes back. Luke Willis, who has struggled to get the opportunity, very talented fighter from Liverpool. Tony Bellew started just bugging the life out of me to give him an opportunity. He came over, he boxed on Spain, in Spain, and now jumped straight into the deep end in a big eliminator fight for a domestic title in his home city. Um, Luke, I'm going to start with you, actually. You're going to open this, this up for us. Um, massive opportunity for you, obviously, boxed out in Spain last time, but now at the MS, the Echo, as, as most of you guys know it, and uh, this is a massive night for your career on Saturday. Yeah, um, just thank you, yourself, Matt Stream and Tony, for getting me the opportunity. Uh, just looking forward to Saturday, putting on a masterclass uh, in front of my own city, and just looking forward to sitting back after it and watching the rest of the bill. It's a great card. Obviously, um, you focused on a fight. But I want to talk about some of the comments that, that you, you said about Ryland. Um, you said he was a little bit of a one-trick pony. Um, you said he had a dodgy barnet. You didn't. I just made that bit up to try and wind him up. But uh, I'm going to do a bit of that today, to be honest with you. But, but I get the impression that, you know, you said this is not fighting, this is boxing. And a lot of people look at Ryland Charlton as strong and rugged and tough. Is it, is it that kind of fight? You're going to try and control this fight with your boxing IQ? Yeah, he, well... He... He does what he says on the tin. He comes forward and he, he swings bombs. I'm not saying he's the worst boxer in the world, but that's the, 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 all he's got on, on me is probably a, a power. But I think he's underestimating my power, and he'll find out Saturday I, I do carry power. And he's saying he's going to come to my city and knock me out. But he finds out on Saturday that he, I've never, I've never even been put on my ass. Never mind knocked out, sparring or fighting. So he'll find out Saturday what I'm about. A lot of people talking about a Ryland Charlton stoppage or Luke Willis on points. Do you have the, the power to end this inside the distance if you want? Yeah, and he throws gloves on me, I can hit. Saturday you'll see. Ryland, uh, he didn't talk about the hair. He did say, though, that you, you're strolling around like you're some kind of celebrity. I'm not so sure, but this is a massive fight for you and fair play to you. You always jump in in these big fights. It used to be at late notice. But it's not anymore. You've had a great camp for this fight. I think the fascinating thing here is you coming down from, what, 147 pounds or, or slightly lighter to 135 pounds for this fight. You look in great shape and, again, a massive moment for your career. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I want to thank you for the opportunity to come down and fight at my uh, proper weight. I've, I've always been a one free fighter. Um, we just had the opportunities at World Weight and it was great because I got my name out there. Um, but yeah, now it's time to show everyone what I can really do and how effective my power is at lightweight. Is that what this fight's about for you, pal? I mean, Luke, Luke is a very, very talented boxer, as he says. You know, he says about you, you do what you say on the tin. So does he. I mean, he's technically very, very solid fundamentals. It's going to be difficult for you to get hold of him and break him down. But is that what you need to do over this 10-round distance? Well, yeah, sure. It's all... It's, everyone's um, got their styles. You've got back foot fighters, which he is. You've got come forward fighters. Um, and it's, it's whoever's going to execute the game plan better on the night. Well, good luck to Luke and Ryland. It's a cracking fight. Going to be live around the world at around 6pm on Saturday. 
We're going to go to a young man that obviously has had one of the best amateur careers that, that any fighter from this city has had. It's going to be a great honour to see the professional debut of Peter McGrail on Saturday night at the Echo MS. And I don't think anyone could look for a better platform for him to do it. Completely sold out. Pete, we're going to box you nice and late in the night, just before Cheeseman against Williamson. Everyone's going to be in their seat. You're ready to start this professional journey on Saturday night. Yeah, I can't wait, Ted. Uh, big thanks to you and Matt Soon the zone to give me the opportunity to showcase my skills on the biggest platform. And uh, I'm just looking forward to putting a show on for the, uh, for the own crowd. It's been uh, a long time coming to box on a big stadium in front of me friends, me family, uh, me city, and I'm just looking forward to it now. Obviously, you're well aware of the history in this city in terms of boxing. A brilliant main event as well. I know you're going to be looking to get the business done on Saturday and then get yourself out in the arena to, to watch what will be a breathtaking fight between Smith and Fowler. Yeah, a million percent. I've been uh, trained alongside Fowler in Sheffield for years, obviously with Team GB and uh, Beefy and the Smiths have always wished me well over the years if they ever needed any advice. So, wish them both very great fights and may the best man win. I know you've got a long way to go in, in the pro journey, but obviously with what you experienced and achieved as an amateur, big things set in terms of targets as a professional, and, and I guess that's to become world champion for this city. Yeah, definitely. I'm a million percent people bringing world titles back to the city. I've always managed to perform well on the big stage in the amateur game, and they, that's always been at a high level. So, yeah, for me, this next year or two, I'm looking to be as busy as possible box as many stars as possible, gain as much experience as possible, and then we'll go from there. Well, look forward to the professional debut of one of your own on Saturday, guys. One of the top, top Olympians. And I think, I think a round of applause for Peter McGrail as he begins his... Uh... Congrats on all your success as an amateur, and, and welcome to the real world, son, as they say. Good luck to you, Pete. Um, Blaine. Another young star coming through from, from the city, um, already had a number of fights, undefeated now, looking forward to another a run out at the Echo Arena, m &S, sorry, keep saying, but uh, huge show on Saturday, and again, starting off, you're going to kick off the show for us on Saturday night, and you'll get to watch all of the fights unfold as well. Yeah, I'm um, just looking forward to getting out there on Saturday, really excited, like if the ring was set up outside now, I'll be waiting in there now, waiting for Saturday night. Um, but I just want to thank yourself, MCH Global and Matt Soon for um, getting, getting me on this bill. And I'm looking forward to putting on a show in front of my hometown on Saturday night. Thank you, Blaine. Rhiannon Dixon, pleasure to have you on the show for, for the first time on a matchroom card. Anthony Crawler, who is definitely one of your biggest supporters, has been talking about you for a long, long time. Um, down the road in Manchester, but up here now in Liverpool and, and excited to have what will be your second fight in quick succession, really, and looking to get on a big roll now and move forward in the division. Yeah, so I was out for a long time, like two years because of the pandemic and obviously with my day job, that kind of took precedent. But, you know, I'm just excited to get my career going off again and, you know, just trying to keep as active as possible. I've seen you have great sparring in, in Joe Gallagher's gym as well, but also you haven't quite had the sort of amateur accolades of some of these people who have been turning pro with, with a big sort of experience behind them and a profile behind them, but you've been learning the sport inside out, boxing on smaller shows as well, and obviously getting great sparring, and now looking forward to boxing on a big show on Saturday as we start our journey with you, and, and hopefully a good win on Saturday night, and then in Manchester on December 18th as well. Oh yeah, definitely. Obviously I haven't come from the conventional route, but I've kind of had like a crash course of boxing now, and... You know, I'm learning from the best, Joe. I've been sparring Tash and, and you know, taking me under his wing. He's a world champion. He knows what he's doing. So I just can't wait to show everyone kind of what I'm about and what I've been doing. Thanks, Rhiannon. And look forward to seeing you performing on Saturday night. We move to the heavyweights now. I've got to tell you, this is a great fight. If you don't know anything about Kamil Sokolowski, I mean, firstly, he looks like he should be in a bomb film. Um, <laughs> secondly, he's... Probably one of the most underrated heavyweights on the European cir circuit. He's ranked number two in Poland. I think there's 24, 25 heavyweights in Poland. This is a really, really good fighter. A fighter that I believe actually could go on and win European titles. He's had to take tough fights against great young heavyweights. Sometimes he's been robbed on the road. I mean, we saw him win the David Adelaide fight with ease. 
And now he steps up against another great GB talent in Solomon Dakers, who in only his third fight takes on what is a really, really difficult fight, straight away over eight rounds. Sam Jones and the team at S-Jam, they rate Sol extremely highly, so do we, so does Max McCracken. But this is a real, real heavyweight fight. Camille, I'll start with you. Um, you're getting yourself a great reputation now, you know, after traveling on the road, taking fights at short notice. Um, this is a great fight for you, and, and you're coming with all the experience. Uh, yes, this is my first uh, fight in Matchroom. Uh, my uh, record now looks very good, but I am a very good boxer. And I am come here and looking forward to Saturday, and I want to check ability, young prospect Salomon Decris. You basically will fight anyone, won't you? I mean, yeah, that... I can fight with anyone. I I don't I don't mind. Uh, just let me know, and I fight. Oh. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, after you box Solomon, you could just have a stroll around town after yes. <laughs> and see what happens. There's, there'd probably be a few it's, in there it's for no you. No problem. Yeah, yeah, good, good, good. <laughs> Camille, thank you. So. Um, this is a massive step up, massive step up. I mean, your first fight was against a very durable, what has become a journeyman. Good stoppage win in your second fight. But I guess in this training camp, you've just had to be a little bit more switched on because you know about the challenge of Camille Sokolowski. This is a quality fighter you're up against. Yeah, like you say, um, he said it himself, he'll fight anybody, you know. And um, also, it's a six rounder, not an eight rounder, I think. Okay. Unless did you're you going to give me a few extra. That just because you think he looks a bit odd. No, I'll it? do eight rounds, but you've got to give me a few extra quid if you want to do the eight. <laughs> but I was told six. Anyway, um, yeah, he's a tough guy. You know, he'll fight anyone. Like you say, man, you can go out in the town and have a few scraps now if you want, mate. Wait yourself out a bit and then uh, come see me Saturday. <laughs> um, but I'll, I'm, I've got the same mindset, you know. I'm not looking to be no disrespect to journeyman, but I'll fight anybody as well. But I put the hard work in the gym to show the. Hopefully the level that I can I can get to. I mean, so many of your GB teammates, obviously some went to the Olympics and some are looking to turn over as well. You're two fights in, three on Saturday. Is this is this a statement of intent from you to say, I want to move quick? You know, I know everyone's going to be turning pro later this year or in early next year, but I'm, yeah. I'm in the pro game now and I'm ready to move at pace. Yeah, exactly that. Um, I don't want to have fights that don't mean anything. You know, I'm, I'm going to gain something from the fight. You know, he's, he's tested good prospects before and he's, and he's, you know, pushed them to the limits. And it's something I need if I want to become a world champion. I need tough tests that are going to prepare me to go on to better things. So um, that's why I'm, I'm looking for better fights and go on to even greater things, hopefully. Well, well done for taking the challenge. So, Camille, good luck on Saturday. Great fight. Three great fights to talk about on this top table. One of them, when you talk about this card and you talk about three brilliant, brilliant domestic 154-pound clashes, of course... Top by Liam Smith against Anthony Fowler. Ted Cheeseman here against Troy Williamson. Brilliant fight. And Kieran Conway against James Metcalf is another brilliant fight. And so important for both of their careers in the 154-pound division. James, I'm going to start with you. I'll joke with you outside. You're a very quiet man. You know, you've been difficult to get hold of at this camp. Even at times, I wondered if you were definitely taking this fight. You've turned up, rocked up in great shape. Massive fight for you in a sold-out stadium and a massive fight for your career. You look, you look happy. You're definitely ready to go on Saturday. Definitely ready, yeah. I mean, you know, you're saying you didn't know I was going to turn up. If I say something, I'm going to do it. And I'll be there on the night and I'm going to win as well. Big fight for you, as I said. You know, you're coming off a, a fight of the year contender against Ted Cheeseman, who's also on the card. Uh, Kieran coming off a defeat and in front of 70,000 on the Canelo Alvarez card as well. But... Home advantage, you know, a, a big thing for you here, obviously, fighting in front yeah. of your home fans in, in this city is going to spur you on. No, I haven't boxed in the city in front of a big crowd like this for a while, so I'm really looking forward to that. And, um, yeah, I just, just can't wait. No. And I have to ask you as a scouser and someone that's in the like, middleweight division about the main event. I've been asking so many people, few are prepared to make a pick, maybe for upsetting people. I don't know if you're prepared That's to do it, but you can is, yeah. sit on the fence if you want, but yeah, a great main event. Fence, yeah. Who do you fancy? Come on in. Don't I sit on the fence. I'm yeah. not, I'm not um, <laughs> going to upset people. Yeah. All right, well, we wish you all the best for Saturday. Kieran, um, a brilliant fight. A lot of people talking about this fight, of course. A great experience for you last time out. You rocked up into Texas, I think, on Wednesday night before the fight. Had to drop a lot of weight. 
um, problems with a visa, but the experience was incredible for you. I'm sure you gained a lot from that, but absolutely must-win fight for you on Saturday. Yeah, um, it is a must-win fight for me. Uh, but the experience out in Texas, in and out of the ring, is just invaluable to me. I think that I've learned a lot, like I said, both in and out of the ring. Um, I've been working on a hell of a lot of stuff in training. Um, things are coming off nicely. I'm in the best shape, best form that I've been in. And um, I, don't see the, I don't see the home advantage for James because I think I'm going to come here and make this look easy. A lot of people talking, as, as when we talked about the Willis and, and Charlton fight, about your ability to box and, and perhaps your favourite over the distance, but you know, James very strong as well. Do you see yourself potentially putting your foot on the gas and, and trying to get him out of there? And you need to make a statement, don't you? If you can do that with a big win, there's plenty of people on this card that you'll be targeting if you're victorious on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, I need to make a statement. Um, if the opportunity comes to take him out of there, I'm, go I'm going for it. And... Um, I believe that I could take it as well. I don't see this going to uh, 10 rounds. Um, the way, the form that I'm in, I just, I just think that I'm different level now. I think even my last perform, my last performance should kick me up the ass, and uh, I've got things in gear now, and uh, I'm ready to show everyone what I'm about. Well, we look forward to a great fight, Kieran Conway against JJ Metcalf. We talk about great fights. This is one that could steal the show on Saturday night. Ted Cheeseman against Troy Williamson for the vacant, sorry, not vacant, defending champion here, Ted Cheeseman, the British light middleweight championship, now known as the super welterweight championship. Troy was here for the, the opening press conference. Everyone looks a bit slimmer, apart from me. Everyone looks like they're in great shape, ready to fight. Um, and this is a fight that a lot of people are very, very excited about. Yeah, I can see why. Um, I think that me and Ted are the, the two best super welterweights in the division and we're going to put it all on the line on Saturday night. I've seen um, both of you a little bit vocal. You know, you talk about your plans to, to knock Ted Cheeseman out on Saturday. Is that the plan? A lot of people talking about his experience um, of the championship fights as well and, and it may favour him late. Looking to start fast, but you're happy you've got everything in the tank to, to go as many rounds as needed on Saturday. Yeah, I, I, I believe in... I, I know how tough I am and I know how fit I am. Obviously, I haven't had the opportunity to show to do the 12 rounds because I've never needed to do the 12 rounds. Of, I'm an explosive puncher and I've, I get rid of people. So I know deep down that I can do the distance. I'm very fit and I'm very, very tough. It's going to make a great fight. I saw Ted's comments about where he said that you're almost talking about a defeat and accepting a defeat just in case it happens as well. Fully confident? No doubts in your mind that you become the new British champion no, on Saturday? No doubts at all. The hard work's been done. I've uh, done the rounds in the gym. It'll show on Saturday night. Ted, these are the fights you love. I've seen an air of confidence in you in this camp and this fight that you know, maybe we haven't seen before. I, can't, I still can't believe that you're only 26 years of age when we talk about the fights that you've had. This is your seventh consecutive 12-round championship fight. Yeah. The experience has been great. I watched back the, uh, the fight with you and JJ Metcalf last night. That was a great performance and a great stoppage as well. A lot of people think this is a very, very competitive fight. Are you expecting that, but fully confident that you take the victory? Yeah, um, obviously Troy Williams is unbeaten. He don't want to lose his unbeaten record. He's going to try his hardest not to do that. But I just believe the experience I've picked up, the, the way I've been maturing, the way I've started to become an all-round fighter, I just believe I'm a level above. But I have to prove that and put a good performance on Saturday night. When you look at your career, you've, you've obviously ducked nobody, but you've been in the deep end very early in your career, going back you know, to that Sergio Garcia fight. We know you had your problems out of the ring as well, but although you've suffered defeat there and, and you've come back, and again, the Scott Fitzgerald fight and stuff, which was a very close fight, do you feel like that experience has just put you in such a great position? And you talk about young fighters who get to you know, the amount of fights you've had, maybe without that championship experience. Yeah. You guys both right up there with the IBF, this is a big fight on, at world level as well, but you are an all-round championship fighter now. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm a veteran on the 12 rounds now, and I have to do it easy. And even in the gym, even the last few weeks, like doing the 12 rounds and sparring, it feels different to when I've done them before. Even though, like, I just the engine's there now. You know what I mean? I train. I know how to push myself hard. And the thing is, with me, I've done it and done it and done it. Troy, this is his first time. He's gonna have to have that gut check. And he keeps saying about his power. No disrespect to Troy. He ain't been hit yet. I have. That's the difference. He's got to worry about what power I hit him with, not what power he's in it with. Everyone can see I've got a great chin. 
But how good is Houston? Well, we shall find out on Saturday night. Cracking fight, Ted Cheeseman against James Metcalf. Finally, we go to the World Championship fight on the card. Shannon Courtney defends the WBA Super Bantamweight, Bantamweight Championship sorry, against America's Jamie Mitchell. Jamie, welcome. Um, Brian Adam. Cohen and team are here. We see him come over with virtually every US fighter. Um, always competitive, always dangerous. Um, Jamie, this is a massive opportunity for you. Um, as we see in some of the lower weight classes, Sometimes people without a huge amount of professional experience get these big opportunities. We know you're an outstanding amateur as well, but what a moment in your career and your life to try and become world champion on Saturday. Yes, awesome, awesome opportunity. I'm so happy to be here and put on my uh, performance for you guys and let you guys see my talents and my skills. You call yourself the miracle. Um, your story is quite amazing. I don't know if you want to just give us a couple of lines about sum up your life in, in two or three paragraphs, which will be very, very difficult to do. But you certainly haven't had it easy on the way to, to this challenge. No, I haven't had it easy in life. Um, came up in foster care systems. Um, you know, so this is a great opportunity for me because it just basically mimics my past and having it hard. So I'm used to hard times and I'm basically gonna make it real easy for myself Saturday night. I saw your, your quote was, uh, very deep and quite aggressive as well at the same time, which, which is fine, which we like. Um, but you talked about, you know, not potentially rating Shannon Courtney as high as, as some in terms of world level. And, and you seem very, very determined to do a job on her on Saturday. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Um, that was more scary than Camille, by the way. Just putting out there. Shannon, um, loving the, the, you know, the, the fire from your opponent. I'm sure it makes you even more switch on. This is a very good opponent, a very good fighter, a very good amateur. And again, coming to, to get what once you were looking to achieve and become world champion. It's going to be a tough fight for you on Saturday. Yeah, it's going to be a tough fight. She's coming here with a fire, exactly like I did when I wanted to be world champion, so I understand, but I've already been there. I am world champion and... There's nothing that she can bring on Saturday night that's going to take that belt away from me. I worked my ass off to get there here, and I'm not going nowhere. What do you expect on Saturday night from her? I know you've, you've watched tape. Technically, she's very, very solid. As I said, a very good amateur as well. She talks about coming to try and stop you and, and knock you out as well. Do you expect an aggressive fight? We know you're always all action. Ten two-minute rounds. We should get a cracker. Yeah, I don't think she'd have gone uh, ten, ten rounds for what I have. I've got that experience in the bag. I can stand and go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, or I can box, I can bring both styles, so whatever she comes with, I will adapt. And I think I'll drag her into deep waters where she's never been before, and uh, she's in for a rude awakening. Jamie, deep waters, you, you ready to swim in deep waters on Saturday? I swam pretty well, so shouldn't be a problem. Bring your own bands. She don't mean that. She don't mean what she's saying. Do you think you can end this fight inside the distance on Saturday? Yes. Is that the aim? That's the end. Okay. Shannon, finally from you, big fights ahead. You talk about unification fights, um, you know, other domestic fights as well, but a must, must win for you on Saturday in what will be an incredible reception. Yeah, um, I'm so excited to actually be here in Liverpool. Everyone's welcomed me beautifully. I actually had an option, as you can, you know, of fighting on the Joshua card or here, and I wanted to fight in Liverpool. So um, I'm buzzing to put on a good show for everyone in Liverpool and make sure that I come home Sunday with that belt. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Jamie. The WBA Bantamweight World Championship on Saturday. We are going to uh, break the press conference just for five minutes, do the heads-to-heads up here, and then we'll be back very soon with Liam Smith against Anthony Fowler. Gents, over to you.